Hello everyone, ClaytonAirDetrailer.com. Today I have a 2020 Hyundai Palisade. We'll be taking a look at and I'll show you how to install the Red Arc Tow Pro Liberty brake controller. Brake controllers are really nice because it'll slow our trailer down and keep us from wearing out the brakes on our vehicle. And it's a little bit safer because if that trailer pushes and we have to slam on our brakes hard, it could be catastrophic. Now this is a very simple kit to install and it looks really nice in our vehicle. We're not gonna be hitting our knee on it. It's gonna look really nice on our dash. This is the only part of our brake controller actually visible. And a lot of them are a big box that we have to mount down here. And when you're getting in or out, it's very common to knock your knees on them, knock them out of alignment. And it's just kind of, it's an eyesore in the cab of the vehicle. So having this looks really nice and it's super easy to adjust. Our system is gonna activate automatically. It's a lot faster than the delayed uh, brake controllers of the past. This thing is always gonna be running. It's gonna work really good in stop and go traffic. A lot of other brake controllers take a while to send that signal. And like I said, this one's pretty immediate. This is gonna be really easy to adjust when we're going down the road. So all we have to do is turn this dial and there's an LED light that indicates which setting we're on. So if we wanna add a little bit more power, simply just turn it up. Or if we wanna take some out, we just turn it down. It's gonna work with trailers up to two axles, which is really nice because that's pretty common. Not only that, it's gonna work with our 12 volt power system. Our system is gonna have a nine to 16 volt output. And we are gonna ha have an output rating of 18 amps. Our brake controller is gonna work with electric or electric over hydraulic. So it's really gonna cover a lot of different trailers you might be pulling. And here's the LED light I was talking about. It's gonna be really easy to see whenever we're turning our dial. And we can manually override it. That way we can just stop the brakes if we want. So we'll put it on two and we get a nice pink colored light because the power is low. And if we crank it all the way up to 10, we're gonna be adding more power to the brakes and we get a nice red light. And with it on the second setting, I'll go ahead and press the manual override. You can see it pushes a little bit less volts. Then we can crank it up to 10 and you'll see those volts jump up. Again, we'll go back to two just so you can see. And then back up to 10. Our brake controller is pretty easy to work with. We can always see where we have it set and it's pretty easy to install as well. I'll go ahead and show you how we got ours installed. To start our installation, we want to locate where we're going to mount everything and then we can run our wiring from there. On our Red Arc, we have the little controller and we want, we want to find a good spot to mount it. Our particular customer wanted it on the left side and up here wasn't really a good spot. There's a lot of stuff interfering with it. So we're actually going to install ours on this little fuse panel, which is going to be nice because we can remove it and make a lot cleaner um, installation on this particular panel. And we can run all of our wiring behind. We'll go ahead and show you where we're, where we're gonna mount our box next. And if you look on our firewall, you can see that red box. That's actually gonna be our operating unit for our braking system. We're gonna mount that right there on the firewall. And it is important to make sure you fasten this securely using self tappers. This, does, this cannot be zip tied because any motion will throw off the braking signal. So we're gonna just self tapper that into the firewall right there. And if you see that grommet right there, that's actually what we're gonna use to run our wire out to the battery and to the negative terminal. And then we're going to run our blue wire in through that grommet from our seven-way plug. And here's where our blue wire comes out at the seven-way. This wire comes back behind our fascia here, up over our trailer hitch, comes down right here. As you can see, there's our blue wire. Comes through this wire loom here, all the way up and over, and over our cross member here. It's very important to stay away from anything hot or moving. Our wire loom comes up through here over uh, the rest of our frame, then pops out right here. Then I zip tied it to a factory line right here. And then follows the tank down this way, then comes down underneath our underbody panel. Then right, follows our underbody panel like this. Well, as you can see, there's that blue wire. Then it follows the underbody panel all the way up here then comes out right here, then goes up behind these factory lines and up the firewall. And we have our blue wire right here. I already have it pulled up along our firewall. It runs over our washer tank and straight down this way. There is some factory lines that we can cl stay close to coming up that firewall. And this will give us a nice area to get it pulled back down into our firewall. We're now ready to install our pigtail harness. We do have some wires here. We're gonna use a pull wire and run our wires in and out of the firewall just to make all of our connections. We're gonna be running our black wire to power, our blue wire to the blue wire from our seven way, the red wire to the brake light switch, and our white wire to the negative terminal on the battery for our ground. 
You can also use a string or a screwdriver and kind of tape everything to the end of it to get it pulled in and out of that grommet. We are going to use an airline tube, so we'll go ahead and show you how we did it. We're now ready to run our self-tappers into our red box. Right before we get all that wiring pulled in, it's going to be a lot easier to work if there's less wires. Now before we run our self-tapper, we want to make sure that there's nothing on the back side of the firewall that that self-tapper could possibly puncture. In this case, where we chose is completely open, so we can go ahead and get that box solidly mounted. As you can see, we have our Topro box mounted right here. I used two self-tappers, and it's mounted pretty solid in there. You shouldn't have to use four of them to get it on the firewall. Just as long as you make sure you have a good strong connection with those self-tappers, it's not going to go anywhere. Now we can go ahead and get our wires pulled through. You are going to need some extra wirings. Now I chose black and white because those are the two colors that we're going to need. I'm going to attach these to our blue wire and get it all pulled through the firewall using our airline tube. We have enough of our wire pulled in. We want to hold on to our black and our white wire and then pull our blue wire until it gets tight and then we'll go back up front and make sure that it's not touching anything hot or moving. We're now ready to make our connections to our pigtail harness. Our blue wire is going to connect directly to our blue wire. Our white wire is going to connect directly to our white wire. Our black wire to our black wire. And then our red wire. We are going to do this one a little bit different, so we'll show you that one last. Since all of our wires are pulled through our firewall in the same distance, we're going to go ahead and cut them at the same length. Just like that. Then we'll show you how to strip them back and make the connections. start with our white wire. We can grab our strippers, strip back a little portion, maybe a little bit more. You can twist it a little bit, then add our blue butt connectors. We'll crimp that down. I always like to give it a little tug and make sure it's not going anywhere. In that case it's good. Now we can grab our pigtail side, pull the cap off of the white wire, twist it together, add it to our butt connector, and we'll crimp it down. We'll repeat that same process for the rest of our wires. And then once they're all crimped together, I'm going to come back with electrical tape and just tape around them just to make sure that there's no moisture that gets into our butt connectors. On this blue wire, we can go ahead and use a yellow butt connector since the blue wire is pretty big. And then when we add the blue wire from our pigtail harness, we probably are going to strip it back a little bit farther and then double it over just to make sure that we get a good strong connection. We'll strip this one back quite a bit more. We'll spin it together like that and fold it over just to make that a little bit bigger for our butt connector. And then we'll crimp it down just like the rest of them. The red wire is going to be a little bit different. It's going to get tied into the brake light switch on our vehicle. Now it is really hard to work with a brake light switch on the brake pedal, but if you track that wire back into this fuse cover, our black and green wire is right here. So we're going to add our red wire to the black and green wire using a quick splice connector. We are going to add our green and black wire to the inside of our splice connector to get started. So we'll just slide that over like so. We'll make sure it's totally seated. Just like that. And then we can grab our red wire, add it to this side of our connector. Then we can grab needle nose pliers and crimp down on this tab. So we'll do it just like this. There we go. And you can grab those needle nose pliers and make sure our connection is complete. Give a little tug, make sure it's not going anywhere. In this case, it's good, so we can full close our cover. Now we can go ahead and clean everything else up. With all of our wiring complete, we can now reach this into our red box and plug this in on the top, and then come back and clean up any of our wiring using zip ties. We are now ready to drill our hole to mount our button. We're going to mount ours on this fuse panel right here. That way when we're looking at it, it's going to be right here on the top left. It'll be nice and easy to see and also easy to access. 
For the bigger hole here, we're going to use a 3 8 inch drill bit. And then for the smaller LED light indicator hole, we're going to use an 8 inch drill bit. I'm going to go ahead and use the 8 inch drill bit to drill a hole for our bigger hole first, just to make a pilot hole and it'll be a little bit easier to, to follow. So we want to grab our fuse panel, figure out where we're going to put it. We're going to try to get it as close to this corner as possible. So we're just going to hold our button up like this so we can drill our hole right about here. We'll grab that drill bit and drill out our pilot hole. Now we can step up to that larger bit and get our hole drilled. And directly above that, we're going to be drilling a hole for our LED light indicator. Our LED light hole is going to go 7.5 millimeters above the center of this hole. I'll go ahead and get that marked and we'll drill it out. We can now grab our little bezel here. There's going to be a little nub that fits around that hole for our indicator light. We'll push that on like so. Make sure it's seated entirely. Now we can grab our switch, push it through to the back side, and grab our lock nut here, and then thread it on. You might have to play with it a little bit just because the fitment will be perfect depending on how you drilled it. But as long as it's close, that's all that matters. So we can get it just like this with it started. Again, we'll make sure that that bezel is lined up with the indicator light. I'll finish screwing down our set screw. If you're having trouble getting that nut started on the inside, the panel could be a little too thick. And instead of sanding the panel, we can actually take this button apart and then sand the um, collar here down on some sandpaper. And that'll just help get everything fitting properly. So we'll carefully take this apart. All you have to do is pull these tabs out like so. You can push on the button and set it off to the side. We can grab our sandpaper and then sand that edge down. I'm going to make sure to do it as even as possible. So we just sand it down. And then periodically check and see how it fits. When we're ready to put this back together, we want to make sure that this plastic piece here is attached down there to our LED light. And we simply just slide this in like so. Again, you want to be careful not to break anything. Everything comes out perfectly there. We can grab our panel, slide that through, and then check and see how everything fits up. So we got all of that material sanded down, and as you can see, everything is on here as, as it's supposed to be. You do want to make sure that this button makes an audible click. It might be kind of hard to hear, but it does click and push down. As you can see, if we flip it over, you can tell there's not a whole lot of that collar left. So you did have to sand it down quite a bit. With our knob turned all the way to the left, we want to grab our button, push or face the zero up towards the indicator light, just like so, and push it on. Now you can probably hear that click. And we can go ahead and get our harness plugged into the back. We can now grab our wire that goes from our button to our control box. Because of where we mounted our box, we are going to use the side with a 90 on the bottom of there. We're going to plug the straight side into our button, just like so. Tab actually has to face down. Plug that in, you'll hear a nice click. We can grab our wire end, put that through the hole in our dash, pull it out the other side. Now we can reinstall our fuse panel. Might have to fiddle with it a little bit. There we go. Now we can reach our plug in and plug it into our box. Now we can grab our wire and push it into our box. You can hear that click in. Then we can go ahead and tidy up our wire. We are now ready to connect our black wire to the battery. We're going to strip back this end. Might do a little bit more. I'm going to fold that over just like we did on the other wire. Add a ring terminal. Crimp it down. 
Then we're not going to run this under our air box, just like this. Then right to our battery. We're going to use a 10 millimeter socket to remove our nut on the terminal. That nut removed. We can add our new terminal with our old terminal. Hold that down just like this. And then reinstall our 10 millimeter nut. To get our terminal cover to close, we are going to have to notch out a couple of cuts to fit around both of our ring terminals. So if we just kind of make a mental note of where that's at, we can grab our crimpers. Then we'll cut the end, just like this. And then you can either remove this or fold it back. I'm probably going to fold ours back a little bit. Then whenever we close it, it'll sit nice and flush. And with it cut out, as you can see, our terminal cover closes perfectly and it still fits right up against those butt connectors or those ring terminals, I should say. So we don't have to worry about any moisture getting in. We'll go ahead and make our connection to our negative terminal. We're going to make all of our connections to our negative terminal the exact same way that we did the positive. Now we need to add a circuit breaker from our power wire running from our brake controller over to our battery. If you need a circuit breaker, you can find one here at eTrailer.com. We do recommend these for any brake controller you're installing. You want to mount it as close to the battery as possible. And then if we come right down here, there's a good spot where we can mount it. It'll stay out of the way of everything and just be a good point to mount it. We grab some self tappers and run them into that bracket. We can go ahead and strip back our wire then add a small ring terminal for our circuit breaker. Now grab our self tapper. We'll add one more self tapper down here. Now we want to grab the end from our brake controller. We'll put that to the auxiliary side. And be careful not to drop that nut down into the front of the vehicle. I'm going to put this wire behind our factory ground and we'll slide it right onto the terminal on our circuit board or circuit breaker. And then we'll tighten that nut down. That nut is going to be a 3 8 once we get it hand tight. Now with that tightened down, we can run the battery from the battery side on our circuit breaker over to the positive terminal on our battery. We can add that new ring terminal and wire to the battery side of our circuit breaker and tighten it down just like we did for the other side. Now we can run our power wire underneath of our air box, get it close, then we'll grab our crimpers and cut that wire. We'll strip it back and add a ring terminal. We're now ready to add the ring terminal to the positive side of our battery and use a 10 millimeter socket to remove that nut. Go ahead and tighten it back down. That's going to do it for a look at the Topro Liberty brake controller on our 2020 Hyundai Palisade.